All right. So first of all, I've got a PhD in physics, partly in superconductors. Uh, that said, I've been out of the field for six years, so please fact check me. Quick recap on superconductivity. Uh, that's when electrons flow through a substance with no resistance. Uh, that means if you set up a system correctly, one electron will actually join up with a second electron that's riding on its wake. When they happen, they do this kind of quantum thing. It's like deeply quantum, uh, where they turn into a boson together. And basically, it means they don't have to play by the same rules as they did before, and they can travel through a material without losing energy. So yeah, when you have a superconductive system, uh, it's got no resistance. Magnetic fields will get kicked out of the uh, material or get locked in place. And um, there will be a sudden phase transition. Like, for example, when water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, it, you know, it gets warmer, 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 and then it stops getting warmer suddenly and starts becoming gas. You'll have uh, situations like that. That's what you're looking for to prove something that, prove that something is superconductive. So a bit of history on superconductivity. It was discovered by Henke Owens, and I'm probably mispronouncing that, in 1911. And this is at ultra-cold like liquid helium temperatures. Uh, since then, it's been a race to try to understand them and try to get figure out how to get a superconductor at room temperature. In the 90s, we reached uh, about liquid nitrogen uh, temperature superconductors. And a couple of years ago, we almost got to room temperature, um, but this is at ridiculously high pressures where it's not entirely useful. This particular superconductor, LK99, was named after Dr. Lee and Dr. Kim in the year that it was invented, 1999. It sounds like it took them a while to really figure out how to synthesize, test, and understand it. The way that they explain how their superconductor works is the copper ions will replace lead ions, and that new structure will cause kind of the material to collapse by a little bit, like half a percent. Um, but that's just enough pressure to get the system to be to have superconductive islands. Uh, they call them superconductor quantum wells. And these islands are close enough together that Cooper pairs can quantum tunnel between the islands um, to give you like a, a superconductive syst macroscopic system across the whole sample. This possible discovery has been met with a lot of skepticism, as it should be. Um, in science, there's no ambiguity to hide behind. Mistakes are, and frauds are quickly caught. Uh, so some examples from most innocent to least innocent. Um, back in the 2010s, uh, there was an experiment called OPERA, which claimed to have found faster than light neutrinos. And that would have been you know, a change in, in a lot of physics laws if that was true. And a lot of people worked on it. And what ended up happening is that there was just a, a simple uncaught error in some of the electronics in a giant machine of hundred moving hundreds of moving parts, and uh, yeah, just eventually they found their error and they corrected, and, and it turns out the neutrinos were, were not going faster than the speed of light. A little bit less innocent was the uh, thing that happened with cold fusion. I believe that was in the 1990s, and those scientists weren't necessarily trying to fool anyone. Um, if anything, they just might have fooled themselves. Uh, they found evidence that could have pointed to cold fusion, and they happened to convince themselves that that was the only possibility. Then a few years back, there was Haruko Obokata. Again, I apologize for mispronouncing that. And she was under a lot of pressure to get results, and she published groundbreaking, groundbreaking but erroneous results on trying to find uh, stem cell pluripotent cells, I believe. And then finally, you have John Hendrick Schoen, who fabricated and manipulated data to get you know, popularity and funding. And when people started catching on, he ended up losing his job at Bell Labs. Now, this is my personal opinion. I think if this is a mistake, um, that it's probably that second case, that there's just a lot of evidence that may or may not be pointing towards 
uh, superconductivity at room temperature, and they're just claiming that it is. Um, and to be honest, I mean, I might do the same thing in their situation because there's a lot of pressure to discover room temperature superconductors right now. There's a lot of people claiming that they've discovered them. Um, there was that Dias, Dias, Ragna Dias guy who's been trying to patent room temperature superconductors, even though he doesn't have any, you know, studies that have been peer reviewed and, and re replicated. And as Carl Sagan said, extraordinary, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. There are, uh, there were six authors in the first paper and three authors in the second, which some people are saying that, uh, they're, uh, trying to line up for the Nobel Prize, since the Nobel Prize tends to be given to a maximum of three people. Uh, one of the authors is relatively well known, and this paper is coming from a top university, so that all rent lent credence to the paper. Uh, the nice thing is that they give explicit instructions on how to construct the material, and so other labs should be able to replicate the results within a week or two. Uh, the main criticisms I've seen revolve around their theory and their explanations of how this works. Although, uh, at the same time, with superconductivity, there's there's a lot of stuff that we know about it and a lot of stuff we don't know about it. And so it, it's going to be a bit shaky, especially with just a few experimentalists working on it on this particular version of superconductivity. If this project turns out to be true and replicable, it could be huge. Uh, so some uh, applications of this are eff energy efficient power grids. So basically you could make power in the deserts of New Mexico and send it all the way to New York City without losing any energy. You could make high speed uh, magnetic levitation trains. You could make more efficient vehicles uh, electric vehicles, since the motors would lose less power uh, due to heat, and the batteries could be superconductive batteries where they just store a bunch of electricity that's just going in circles until it's needed. You could have uh, high-speed computing, since a lot of uh, energy is lost to our current circuits, and making them smaller is, is difficult without enough heat pumps on it. And because there are superconducting circuits which switch on and off like a hundred times faster than regular circuits, uh, MRI machines <clears throat> require strong magnetic fields, and you could get very strong fields if you don't have to worry about the current creating uh, heat for you. And quantum computers uh, use uh, superconductivity to run their systems. Uh, a couple of extra things. They have published two videos on their uh, material. Uh, the first one was a few months ago, and it shows a magnet pushing a sample around. Now, technically, if this was a superconductor, they shouldn't have to keep moving the magnet to move the sample. They should just they should be able to just push the magnet towards the sample, and the sample should move away and stay away. Uh, instead, they have to keep moving the magnet back and forth which like a, a sheet of copper would probably do this too. So there's nothing too fancy about that one. Uh, the second video is a bit more promising. Uh, it, it's possible to, I mean, it, it does show what could be a room temperature superconductor. It is possible to fake it, but it would be difficult. Uh, the big magnet, which looks like it's just one pole of magnet, um, if that was it is possible to make like special magnets which have multiple fields and then a paramagnetic material would act just like what they were showing so yeah i think basically it's just going to be come down to other labs and can they reproduce what this lab has done and we should know soon uh if it's real or not <laughs>